what's up? This is Jason Brooks from Fatrol Sounds, and you're checking out Baltimore Basics. I don't know what happened. I just got wrapped up in a whole nother life. And I just... Turntables got dusty. Well, I got rid of them. My friend Richard, he uh, went away for a while. He had a government-sponsored vacation. And uh, he developed a really bad habit. And I remember when he came home, he gave me all this. He gave me his turntables and his records. And he sold me everything for $50. So I was excited. I just thought he wanted me to have this. I didn't know he had a habit that bad. So um, looking back at it, I was like, damn, you gave away everything. for 50. But he was like, I'll only sell it to you for $50. Because I think in his head, he thought he was going to get it all back at some point. Like he was going to clean up his act and he was going to get his... Record collector. I mean, he had crates of crates of crates of crates of records. Like I said, I got a little older. And, you know, life happens. High school, I'm, I'm, I'm going to girls. I'm quite popular. I'm very popular. And, you know, I didn't know what to do at the high school, so I went to the Army, and I just... I like hanging out and partying, but I just lost interest, I guess. I didn't really lose interest, always in the back of my head is this. I became an adult. And I didn't see money being made as a DJ. That was like a hobby. Most people worked during the day and they would DJ weddings or whatever on the weekend. I didn't know being a club promoter was a real job. You know, making beats was fun. I had no clue that that was a real job back then. You know, I always heard names like, you know, Quincy Jones or you know, Larry Smith. And all, but I didn't know what they did. I just thought they was like hanging out in the music studios and making music. I didn't know that was a real job. And I just, um, kept getting in more and more trouble. My friend Mike D, he, he got in a little trouble, a lot of trouble. He was gone. So I was just, you know, in a whole different world. But then, um, I don't know what happened one day. I was, I had a little money. I don't know if I was listening to a radio. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I was listening to a local radio and the DJ was just bad. I was like, how's he on the radio? Like, some of the DJs, they, they're on the radio stations, they're not good. They they just not, they, they can't scratch, they can't cut, they wrong selection. At least back then, the radio DJs could play what they want in the mix show. It's not like that anymore. Back then, they could play what they want in the mix show. I'm like, dude, you're horrible. How are you on the radio? So then, um, there was a, he probably doesn't even, don't even remember this, a DJ, local DJ, that was on the radio, V103 named Bubby, um, sorry, 92Q, Bubby Love. And I, I was kind of cool with Bubby. I don't know how I bet him. But he was like, yeah, yeah, you know, come down to the radio station. I was like, I want to work on the radio. So uh, I was like, all right, I saw how much work was involved working in the radio. Deuces, not interested. It was too much work because <laughs> he was like, I got to be up. Be at the radio station like quarter six in the morning. I got to be up. Got to have a positive attitude. People don't care I had a bad day or anything like that. It was him and Frank Ski that on the radio. I was like, word. Thank you for the one-day internship and it showing me around, but I don't have the attitude for this or the drive. So I was like, I'm going to buy me some turntables. See if I can I just I don't know why. One this, I bought a little cheap little like DJ in the kit, um, the, the Gemini turn turntables. So I bought some little cheap little Gemini turntables, a little cheap mixer, and I was just horrible because um, you know, you don't go from Technics 1200s down to a uh, Gemini turn. You go from Gemini's up to turn, you know the Technics 1200s. So I was, you know, I just want to sell them to mix a little bit. Like, no, no, we're playing all that reggae music, you know, all the the old rhythms, you know. 
Showtime rhythm, you know, Bam Bam rhythm, like, you know, if anybody's in the reggae music, they know all this stuff. So I was, you know, playing, playing, playing. Then, um, play a little club music, a little house music. And then I was like, man, I, I gotta buy me some real turntables. I can't work on this stuff. At the time, I was working for a school system in Baltimore, and there was a art teacher there. And I was just talking to her. She's like, yeah, my boyfriend's a DJ. And I was like, oh, real? She's like, he's selling his turntables. I was like, for real? So she was like, yeah, you know. But she was just like this artsy art school, because she went to the art college at Micah. Yeah, she went to Micah. And I was like, Okay. So I'm like, her boyfriend got turntables. I'm thinking she was just goofball or whatever. But she was just real like, hi, I'm Tara and blah, 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 blah. So we go around the corner. We go to the office, talk to her desk. She's like, yeah, that's my boyfriend right there. It was a picture of them two together. I was like, where? She was like, right there. So we look up. I see some teeth and some eyes, but I don't see no face right there. So her boyfriend... <laughs> He was so dark, man. He's one of my best friends right now. DJ Legacy, man, for audio junkies. <laughs> for the record, all his photos are just teeth and eyes. But anyway, so, <laughs> so she was like, yeah, you know, I had some little money, you know, at the time. So she was like, come to that house, come meet him. So we called her, came down, and he's like, yeah, some of my turntables. So he's from Jamaica and everything. So I was like, where? So we played the same music, for the turntables. And um, he was like, I'm having a party tonight. So he's in college. Now I'm a couple of years older. So he's in college. He had this huge brownstone by the, by the art school. I swear I had to have the art college. His house was like the official party house. So I don't think that school has fraternity sororities. So... If it was, like, his house would be, like, the frat house. If, if you know, if they did. So I came to the party. I was like, this dude just invited me over his house. And at the time, I was real shaky. You know what I mean? My, my, you didn't know what version of me you were going to get into. I was like, we can just take these turntables, man. You know what I mean? But he was so cool, me and my man. So we went go go see him. And um, we came to the party. The party was lit. I was like, you art. These art nerds are getting down in here. So, um, you know, it was just fun. I, he was just a nice guy, bought his turntables or whatever. Some kind of way he talked me into buying his turntables, but letting him keep them for like a week. He could talk to anybody, anything. He, I think he, I kept the turntable, he kept the turntable for like a week because he was doing a party or something like that. Something weird like that. I was like, all right. But, He's a great guy, positive guy. All he wanted to do was DJ and graduate. That's all he wanted to do, was having these parties. So now I got the DJ bug again, cause um, you know, my friend Mike was, was away on his government sponsored vacation. And it was long, you know. Um, so I started hanging with Legacy. Just up high. He was totally opposite of everyone I was hanging with at that time. Totally out. He wasn't in the drugs. He wasn't in no street stuff. He was just like, I like music. I like girls. Oh, and I go to college. But it was like music and girls and college in between there. You know what I mean? So he went to class. He was a good student and everything. But by hanging with him and his passion and enthusiasm for DJing was so infectious, I started getting that feeling back again. So, you know, he was DJing the clubs. I was like, how you DJing the club? He was like, I just one day and told him I was a DJ and I wanted to do that. I was like, wow. So, here's a little bit of a side note about me. If anybody knows me personally, I'm super confident. You know, I'm not scared of nothing. But, I'm really not that confident in certain things. And, you know, I really shouldn't even 
reveal this weakness, but it's the truth. Like, I, I could never talk to girls. I'm a nervous wreck when I would get around women. Like a wreck. A certain kind of women. I like good girls. Hint, hint, hint. I need good girls. No, no, stop. But, uh, <laughs> but I like good girls. You know what I mean? And I like women that are doing something with themselves. They always seem out of my league. So I wouldn't, I would never approach them. It's not even about looks or anything like that. Like, wow. You know, she like she really doing something with herself. And I felt those though, even though I had a little money and popularity or whatever in my little street world, she's a real adult doing things, you know, going to school, she's got a house, or, you know, her own place or whatever, nice place. But I just never had that confidence. Going for a job, I never had the confidence for like job interviews and stuff like that. I don't know why, I just, I just didn't have it. But then when I met Legacy, he was just like confident with everything. I was like, so we're just gonna walk over to a bar, tell them we're DJs, and they're gonna let us DJ here. And he was like, no, probably not. But if you keep asking enough, they'll let you come and set up. I was like, all right. And then we did it. I was like, shit, oh, wow.